of getting my AA degree. But they were finna close my case because I wanted to go to USC and get my bachelor's. But I didn't have no money to get that bachelor's degree. Friday, I went and he was on time God. He was on time. Because they gave me that money to go get my bachelor's degree. When the word of God says, and he gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love.
message that I wanted to speak to you today from the title of this sermon. It says, how do you feel about spiritual maturity? Now, maturity is something very, very important for all of us, isn't it? Not just spiritual either, but physical maturity. We all look forward to when we were little children and when we were going to grow up and become the men and women that we're supposed to become. Amen? Amen. I remember when, when I was a kid, I can't wait. I can't wait to grow up. Can't wait to grow up. Have me a beer. You know the way they said You know the way they did that. We was all thinking that way, wasn't we? Anyway, my focus statement of the day. I mean, you know, just real, real quick. Physical maturity is always being important because we need to grow into the adults that we need to become. Amen? But spiritual maturity is even more important than that. And that's what we're going to be going over today. My focus statement of the day is that are we aware of what spiritual maturity is and how it's achieved? Important. And my function statement of the day is on this side of heaven, we realize that spiritual maturity never stops growing. Never. So how many of you remember the story of Peter Pan? Remember that? When we stop to think about it, we remember how this guy in green tights used to fly around this place called Never Never Land as this swashbuckling hero fighting the notorious Captain Hook. And we remember that he flew to the house of the Darlings. That was their name. And he sprinkled fairy dust on the kids. What kind of dust? <laughs> anyway, yeah, he's big with fairy dust on the kids. And they all flew away to Never Never Land. Remember? See, those of us, we just got to be careful because the only kind of dust that got sprinkled on us, if we flew away to Never Never Land but then got arrested, you know? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Just the way it was, bro. I'm telling it like it is. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, Dave Chappelle used to talk about that. It, it just sprinkled fairy dust on you, you know. <laughs> anyway, we remember that pirate ship, too, with its crew, don't we? And the crocodile that swallowed the clock. Tick tock, tick tock. Remember that? But the thing that I remember the most is the fact that None of the kids that lived in Never Never Land ever grew up. They, ever, they never grew up. As long as they stayed in Never Never Land, they would remain children forever. Sounds like a dream, doesn't it? To be able to stay young forever without a care in the world. Well, what would you say if I told you that Never Never Land really does exist? And that the ability to remain and think like a child is still very possible. The only thing about this dream is that we need to ask ourselves the question, is this what I really want? Is this the way that life should really be? The deceptive thing about being in a perpetual state of immaturity is that you don't even know it when it's happening to you. You're too immature to even realize that you have not grown psychologically or spiritually. Yes, you think that you're mature because you've grown physically. But you may be oblivious of the fact that you have not grown psychologically or spiritually. You don't even know it. Amen? Now, I know that I called this place where we could go to remain like children never, never learn. But that's not its real name. Its real name is La La Land. That's when people keep their state of mind continuously saturated with drugs and alcohol, creating a perpetual haze and an altered state of consciousness. Their addiction won't let them stop. We see them every day out here, don't we? I remember one time we were sitting in here doing a, doing a sermon. Sermon was going, man, place was packed, just like it is right now. Oops. Excuse me. 
And uh, all of a sudden, this brother comes running through the door. Didn't even have a shirt on. He came running through the door. He said like this. <laughs> and I mean, ran up and down the aisles and all around. Pastor Scott said, whoa, Heavenly Father, Lord. <laughs> We had to pray that demon on up out of here, you know what I'm saying? Because he was running around just acting a fool. So we need to understand that. And, and see, what did that happen? That don't happen. People don't normally do that kind of stuff, do they? No, he had to be doing something that caused that perpetual state of mess upness that brought him through here acting that way. Amen? They have, I mean, when we're like that, we've chased the bag so long and continuously that we've stunted our growth. Not our physical growth necessarily, but their psychological and spiritual growth. I remember when I was 36 years old, still on dope. And I was so proud, I'd walk around and tell folks, man, I still feel like I'm 18. You know why? Because I was psychologically. I had not grown since that first line, since that first hit. I had not grown or matured psychologically or spiritually. Amen? So it's important to understand that when we let all these different kinds of controlled substances take control of our lives, we stop growing. So if perpetual immaturity is not what we should be victims of, what should we be working towards and why? Turn your Bibles to Ephesians 4, and we're going to read 11 through 16, and let's stand for the reading of the Word of God, please. He kind of spells it out there for us, doesn't he? He spells it out there for us, and we need to keep this in mind. So, Never Never Land needs to forever stay in our imagination. In our fantasy storybook world. Because according to Ephesians, it's time for all of us to grow up. To grab hold of what Jesus is trying to bring us to. To the building up of the body of Christ. Amen? Now, it's imperative that we understand that in order to grow spiritually, we need to want that growth. You've got to want it. It doesn't just come and grab you and make it happen. You have to want it. Unless we want to grow, it won't happen. I mean, think about it. When we were kids, we used to say things like, I can't wait until I'm 16 so that I can go get my driver's license. Remember that? Or... I want to be just like my dad and mom or Michael Jordan so that I can get my, I mean, so that we understand. See, we, we understand that even at that young and tender age that we're going to have to grow to that level because we recognize that we are not there yet. The level of maturity that we are going to need to achieve our goals is off in the distance. It's off in the distance and it's going to take time for us to get there. We all want to see ourselves or our children develop new skills. We get excited when we hear our children utter their first words, don't we? Or take their first steps. So just like it is important to witness the development of the new abilities in our children or even in ourselves, it is also important that we grow in maturity to help others become all that they can be. And unless we become all that God wants us to be, how are we going to help shape those who we are, that are in our charge? Amen? So spiritual maturity is just like physical maturity. In that we must want to grow. So now the question is, now that I want to grow in maturity, how do I go about it? Well, First Peter 2.2 2 says, Like newborn babies long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. Now that's fine for when we start out. But that's not where we want to stay. Isn't that true? And it's kind of a shame because a lot of people, they come to church and that's what they do. They don't strive for anything more. They're used to the milk. And that's all they want is just milk. They're comfortable being right where they are. And why is that? Because they don't want any responsibility. They don't want to be taken out of their comfort zone. You see, it's easy to be a baby. 
Others feed you. They dress you. Change your diaper. Being a baby in church is the equivalent of when we don't want to teach. Or when we don't want to rebuke sin. Or do any work at all. We don't want to serve or social club. We come so that we can show off our latest outfits. Or to meet our next girlfriend or boyfriend. So being a baby is not our final goal, even though some of us like to treat salvation that way. Isn't that so? Many people think that the only thing that needs to happen in, in our, is our acceptance of Jesus Christ. And sometimes it's not enough, it's not even their fault. Because that's the way that we sometimes present it. I remember when I first started trying to lead people to Christ, I used to tell them, all you got to do is say these words. These words ain't no magical words that just make things happen. It's something, what is it? The Bible tells us. If you read the Bible, it tells us. You've got to believe in your heart. And that's in your mouth. Listen, you must be born again. Amen? You must be born again. But it's important for us to understand that uh, accepting Christ is just the beginning of a long and wonderful relationship. It is the beginning of our training. And it's the beginning of our service to Him. One thing I love about this church, when we do have people that kind of hold a lot of hats, they wear a lot of hats in the church, and there's, they have a lot of responsibility, when they leave, it leaves quite a gap, quite a hole in the ministry. But what I love about this church is when I let people know where that hole is and what we need, I have had so many of my brothers and sisters step forward and volunteer to be used. And you don't know how much I appreciate that. I mean, I wouldn't want to mention any names, Geraldine, you know, but <laughs> my sister Geraldine is a fantastic sister in Christ. She's stepped forward, just, you know, Brother Eugene, same thing. They've stepped forward, you know, to volunteer for anything that needs to be done. They want to be used by God. And you know what that tells me? They're not just selling for the milk. They're not selling for the milk. They're making them them smoothies and grinding up a steak in there, you know what I mean? Getting some of that good food in there. You know, getting physically fed what they need to get fed. Amen? Get them strength. We are born babies physically so that we can grow up and become productive individuals of society. Likewise, we are born again so that we can become mature Christians that are productive and serving the Lord. So, like we said before, we must have a genuine desire to grow up and become mature persons in Christ. But it is also important to understand that we must continue to nourish the desire to grow spiritually. If you have no desire to grow spiritually, guess what? It won't happen. If you want to grow spiritually, there's spiritual disciplines that you must implement into your life that's going to strengthen you. One thing that I knew a long time ago when I came to Christ, I was going to have to change what I'm hearing and the things that I'm thinking day in and day out. Because my life was saturated with radio stations and movies and watching stuff that I shouldn't be watching. Instead of me thinking about the things that have spiritual strength and sustenance, I'm bebopping down the street. You know, this is 92.3. Hey! And that's exactly what was happening. I was just... But you know what? I knew every song on the radio. <laughs> you know, but that's what happens to us. I knew that I was going to have to change the environment of my mind. Listen to the things that were going to build me up. When I turned to Christian radios, guess what? I may not hear every bebop song, but that's okay, because what they have on there is preachers preaching the word, and I'm getting it, man. I'm, I'm pulling this stuff in like a sponge. And that's where we should be. That doesn't mean that you got to do that all the time. That's not what I'm saying. But you know something? Change the environment that your mind is in at all times. Some people who started out on fire, they reach a level of maturity and set, that sets them apart from everybody else. But somehow along the way, they lost their enthusiasm. Have you ever seen that happen? I've seen that happen. When we begin our growth towards maturity in Christ, there are certain things 
that we learn to do that help us to grow, which is what I was just talking about. Every day we are going to come across situations that will present us with opportunities to exercise what we have learned through our Bible reading, through our Bible study, conversations and what we hear, our prayer life, and our devotional commitments. We are going to run into temptations that can only be defeated by our willingness to put on the armor of God daily. Got to put it on. Temptation is coming. It's going to come. It's just it's what happens to us. And let me tell you something. There's nothing wrong with temptation. It's what you do with it. Amen? Jesus was tempted. When he was up on the mountain, Jesus was tempted. Satan came right along. Now I could almost see that whole scenario. Here's Jesus. He done fasted 40 days. Hungry. Here comes Satan. Hey! What's up? <laughs> and next thing you know, and he's running it down to Jesus, trying to get Jesus to do some worship toward him. Amen? But Jesus knew what to do. He knew what to do. He knew how to keep his mind constantly fixed on God. And yeah, it's hard for us to keep our minds constantly fixed on God. Why? Because imperfection allows our minds to just wander all over the place. That's what we do. But you know, as we learn to keep our minds saturated with the Word of God, and, and that's done, we can keep our minds on that by listening to radio stations, by prayer life, by all the stuff. Keeping our mind always in contact with God makes a big difference. Trust me. This can happen if we begin to develop a spirit that says to ourselves that we are mature, I mean, we can, we can mess up. We can mess up. Our lives can get messed up when we say to ourselves that we are mature enough and that there is no need for any more growth. Anybody like that? You hear the people like that? They think they've already arrived. When that happens, we become spiritually stagnant. We become stuck. And the power that Jesus usually brings through our ministry becomes impotent. Let us consider the Apostle Paul, who even though he wrote over one half of the New Testament, did not consider himself to have reached a place where he no longer needed to grow. Mature as he was, he acknowledged the fact that he had not reached perfection or maturity so as to cease from striving to grow even more. But instead, says about his quest for spiritual growth, in fact, we're going to read it right now. Turn your Bibles to Philippians 3. And we're going to read 12 through 14. Philippians 3, 12 through 14. Give me an amen when you're ready. Amen. amen. And the word of God said, it says, and this is Paul speaking, he says, Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, whoops, I wanted to stop there. But let me read that anyway. Let us therefore, as many as are perfect, as are perfect, have this attitude. And if anything, you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also to you. However, let us keep living that, living by that same standard to which we have attained. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not perfect. We have not arrived. None of us have arrived. And let me tell you something. The Apostle Paul can say he didn't arrive. None of us arrived. Amen? Because that was one strong, strong brother. So Paul knew that in this life there was always room to grow. He had the attitude that it didn't matter what he had done in the past. And we've got to remember that. And I mean, if you've done great things in the past or if you've done some messed up things in the past, don't meditate on that. Don't dwell on that. Let it all go. All I can say to you about if we mess up, confess your sin. Jesus is faithful and just to forgive you. Amen? Leave it behind you. You don't have to carry that around with you. It's like, a, it's like a big knapsack full of rocks that you're carrying on your back. And if you think that sin doesn't weigh something, you're wrong. It'll make you, sin is so bad that it'll make you walk like this. It'll bend you over. It's so heavy. You got to learn to let that stuff go. 
So don't focus on any of those things. But instead, keep your eyes on the things that lie ahead. He said that he pressed on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That upward call of God in Christ Jesus cannot even be achieved without the spiritual growth that Paul knew he needed to keep the zeal and enthusiasm that motivated him to continually put himself in harm's way in order to bring us as many, or to bring as many people that he could to Jesus. Amen? He was comfortable being in harm's way. He was comfortable doing what it is that he had to do. Why? Because he knew what he was supposed to do, and it didn't matter what they did to his body. So Paul knew that he needed to continue to grow spiritually. And as he continued to develop spiritually, he went on to bigger and greater accomplishments. But what happens when we come to that place where we think that we've arrived? Let's look at Peter for a minute. Peter was so into himself that he thought that he would never deny Jesus. Any of us ever been there? I know I have. And let me tell you something. You know, I, I've always said, I, I never deny Jesus. I, I'll never deny Jesus. I love Jesus. Is that Peruvian flake? What did you just do? You just denied Jesus. <laughs> You know, just and, and did that. Why? Because you follow in your own desires and your own flesh. Amen? When we know that Jesus is that Jesus is doing great and wonderful things in our life, we have a tendency to think more of ourselves than what we should. Romans twelve three says, For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think so as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. So what does it mean to have sound judgment? Well, in my experience, it means to be careful about how much temptation you think that you can bear. Don't try to put yourself to the test. Peter didn't even realize it, but he set himself up to be tested and to fail. One of the worst things in the world that I ever did was think that I had something under control. And I even prayed to God. I said, Lord, I said, Lord, test me at this. I think I'm doing really good at it. Test me at it. Don't ever ask God to do that. Because he will test you and put you right in your place. I failed so miserably. But you know what I learned? Confess my sin. Ask God to forgive me. And he forgives me. Amen? And then I just continued to work on it. But I learned a lesson. Don't ever ask him to check you out. Don't ever ask him to test you. It's a messed up situation. Because he'll do it. Jesus told him, told Peter in Luke twenty two thirty one. he said, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. Oh my God. What does that mean? That means to put him in a situation that would test him down to his very essence. To try him in the thing that he thinks he excels in. That's just what I did. Did he love Jesus? Yes, I believe he did. Peter loved Jesus. I believe he did. But he thought he loved him more than himself. And that is where we all fall short. We all say that we love Jesus and that we would give our lives for him. But let me ask you a question. If you won't live for Jesus today, what makes you think that you would die for him tomorrow? Amen? Makes sense, don't it? If you want to prove that you love Jesus, prove it by living for him now. Prove it by being obedient. And when we finally come to that place where we are becoming more and more sanctified, then we will be able to recognize the fact that we are growing spiritually. Then we will know that we are becoming more and more mature. That we are growing up in Jesus. So let us remember that spiritual maturity is not something that we are born with. In fact, it is not something that we are born again with. Spiritual maturity takes time to grow. And there are steps that need to take place in order to accomplish that. But one of the reasons that Christians don't grow is that they do not see the need to grow. 
They have no desire to work and to serve to the fullest extent of their ability. When people develop a burning hunger and thirst to work for the Lord, then they will develop the other steps they need in order to grow. Because that hunger will drive them to their knees in repentance and obedience. So let's be like Paul, who did not think more of himself than he ought to, thinking that he didn't need to grow anymore spiritually, but knew that as long as he was in this life, receiving all of the great revelations that God was giving him, that he would need to continue to grow spiritually and go on to bigger and greater revelations. So in conclusion, let us all remember that spiritual growth is always needed. We never come to a place where we don't need to grow in this life. That as we grow to show us our appreciation for what God has done for us, let us make sure that the maturity that we are manifesting is used in service to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Anthony Stallworth, and I'm a senior pastor at Central City Community Church of the Nazarene. We're located at 419 East 6th Street, downtown Los Angeles, on the corner of 6th and San Pedro. We are a church that serves the Skid Row community, so I'm sure that you can imagine that it's difficult for us to support our ministry with the tithes and the offerings. If today's message has helped you, perhaps you would like to come alongside Central City and prayerfully consider helping support this ministry by sending your tax-deductible gift to Central City Community Church, P.O. Box 13273, Los Angeles, California, 90013. Thank you.